grade 10 mindsetters to another Learn Extra Live show. You're here with me, Megan, and one of our fabulous, fabulous teachers, Haley. Can you believe it? I haven't been here for a Thursday ever. So this is my first Thursday, and I want to say I'm very excited to be here. Let me just tell you that today we are doing Mathematical Literacy, proudly sponsored by Macmillan. This is a beautiful book. And I, I think today we are doing scales. Haley, we're doing scales today? We're doing scales today. I'm Fantastic. very excited about it. Fantastic. So let me tell you where you can get all your information because I know you're going to be asking me in a few seconds, Megan, I don't know where the link is. I don't know where this is. So I'm going to tell you. You can find all the notes, so all these notes that we're going to go through today, at www.learnextra.co.za forward slash live. And you can talk to me on Facebook right now for the next hour at facebook.com forward slash learn extra. But let me tell you, there's something really exciting happening before. Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it after the first ad break. But I'm not going to spoil it now. I'm not going to do anything and tell you anything now. So I'm going to let Haley take over the lesson and she's going to go with it. And then I'll talk to you after the ad break. Okay. That sounds very cryptical. <laughs> Hi, guys. Yeah. Welcome to today's show. Okay, 10 to 12, and we are doing what is scale. So that's what we are doing. Let's see what the lesson's all about. Um, in this lesson, we're going to work with number scales. We're going to work with bar scales. And then we're going to calculate map and or plan measurements when an actual length and distance are known using a given scale. We're basically going to be dealing with maps. The whole lesson is going to be dealing with maps, and I'm looking forward to it. So let's start off with understanding a scale. So when we enlarge or reduce the size of an actual object in a picture, we say the picture is scaled up or scaled down. So that's important to realize that the picture is in the same proportion as the original was. It's just been scaled up, and they made bigger. Like a picture of an ant would be made bigger or made smaller. So it's not always to po possible to show the actual size of the object. So that's an example. It's impossible to print a life-size picture of a train. A photograph of a train has to be scaled down for it to fit onto the page. And so that's what we see so that we can see the whole train. And like I said, an ant we would scale up so that make it enlarge so we can see the whole ant. Right. We do this in two ways. We do this with number scale. So we use a scale to build smaller or larger models of the actual object. The picture, so this picture, let me see the picture. Well this picture shows a picture of a car. So we've got a model of a car. The model was built using a one to 10 scale. This means that every measurement on the toy car, so every measurement on the toy car is 10 times smaller than the actual car. 10 times smaller. If the height of the toy car in the picture is 140.8 140 millimeters, the actual height of the car will be 140.8 times 10 because it was 10 times smaller. So it would be 1408 millimeters or I could change it to centimeters, 140 centimeters. What's important to note about a scale is that it is written as a ratio. And if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I did ratio with you in so much detail. This is where it comes in. This ratio is crucial to understand ratio. It comes up in so many different sections. So it's written as a ratio, and we write it the dimensions of the image to the actual dimension. So this is, I like to say, I always say to my kids when I'm teaching, I say to them, we're looking at the map or the image to real life. And that's how I think of my ratio. In this example, the dimensions of the picture to the dimensions of the actual car were 1 to 10. Now I'm going to go back to this 1 to 10. It is important to remember with ratios that this is one part to 10 parts. There are no units in ratio. And that's a crucial step. So we did our example, we had 1 millimeter was equal to 10 millimeters. So one millimeter on the map was 10 millimeters in real life. But I could do any parts. I could do one centimeter is 10 centimeters. So one centimeter is 10 centimeters. I could even go and measure it like with my hand maybe, although this picture of the car, my hand, is probably smaller than my hand. But if I was looking at something else, I could say, well, one hand size is 10 hands. 
So it's important to remember that it is a ratio, and we deal with it like we do a ratio. Okay. And then the next thing that we need to know, the next way to deal with maps, is with bar scale. So a bar scale makes it easy to estimate the distance between two points. And especially you grade 10s and 11s out there, estimation is a key skill that you need to be able to use. They can ask you to estimate a distance rather than to work it out exactly. So it's important to remember that. Um, so we can estimate the distance on a map or a plan. It is a picture of the scale rather than a number scale. A bar scale is marked in units, much like a ruler, so similar to a ruler, and it is proportional to the scale of a map. An advantage of the bar scale, and I'm going to show this to you now, is that when we enlarge or reduce the map or the picture, the bar scale will enlarge or reduce proportionally. So I've given you an example here. Okay, put it in the center. If I look at this bar scale that I have here, I've got 0 to 4. So that's 0, 1. It's not very clear, so I'm just going to remake the numbers. Kilometers. So I would measure this with a ruler. I would measure that distance, and then that distance would be what it represents on the map. And we're going to do an example of this. So I'm going to show you some Google Map. So let's go to Google Map. And I've got Google Map open, and I have a picture of, at the moment, we're looking at like the greater Gauteng. We've got Joburg, um, I've got Pretoria, and I've scaled this down in the corner. I'm not sure if you can see this. I've got a bar scale. So this represents, it tells me how much represents 20 kilometers. So anyway, let's take a picture of it and see if I can get that scale. I'm missing the edge of the picture. Let's go back to my notes. OK, there's my picture. So 20 kilometers. I think let me try to redo that so that I've got the whole picture in. So capture that. Right. OK, and let's go back to this map. Right, and here's my map. Let me move it. Let me find a bit of space here. Right, there's my map. Now, there's my 20 kilometers. And hopefully now you can see this a little bit clearer, that that's my 20 kilometers. It represents 20 kilometers up to that point. Okay? If I enlarge it, what's going to happen? Let me delete these lines. And if I pick, click on my picture, which I should be able to do, okay, click on my picture, and I enlarge it. What's actually happening to my bar scale is that it is enlarging, but it is enlarging in proportion because so too are my towns that you can see on the map. So although this is getting bigger, let's move it a little bit, although my 20 kilometers is getting bigger, and if I have to measure it, it's a bigger distance on a ruler, so too are the towns it's in proportion. So that's what's important, what's nice about a bar scale. Okay. Let's go back to Google Maps for a second, because Google Maps, what we can do is we can actually zoom in to the city. So let's zoom in a little bit and see what happens to my scale. Now I've got more detail, and my scale has gone down to 10 kilometers. So if I take a picture of that to show you, I'll take the picture far enough. Let's try that again. Right, let's go back to my notes. And there's my picture. Now let's delete this one. Here's my picture now with 10 kilometers. And again, I can enlarge it, and you can see the same concept. So now I've got more detail. I can see more areas than I could before. And I can go back to Google Map, and I can enlarge it further. And I can actually go down until I can actually see a particular street. I've got five kilometers for the same distance. And it's wonderful. If you've got opportunity, go play on Google Map. It's really a lot of fun. And you can get quite a bit of information. And you can actually try and find your 
house, your street, your school. It's a lot of fun. And you can work on your scale. And you can see like how far you actually travel. And it's quite a nice exercise to see if you can use the scale to work out your distance from your school to your house. And then maybe measure it in your car, see what the difference is. And do you think there would be a difference? So I think there would be a difference because we would measure, on here we would measure kind of as the crow flies, straight. Whereas in a car we would have to go round corners, roads, Interesting exercise. Okay, let's move on to today's questions. I think starting off with the questions, because this is the easiest way to actually teach you about number scales and bar scales. So, question one, taken from the Macmillan book, um, the grade 10 book, chapter 10, and we're dealing with page 181, question one. So, on a plan, the length of the wall measures 3.8 centimeters. Calculate the actual length of the wall if the scale of the pan is 1 to 250. Before I carry on with this, I want to go back to my number scales and just give you one more comment. Okay? I'm looking at different sizes, and that's what we're going to do in question one. So we had our car was 1 to 10. We saw a lot of detail of the car. Now I'm going to be looking at 1 to 250. 1 to 250 might be house plans, okay? So, le less, uh, like a bigger area. If I'm looking at a city, it might be 1 to 20,000. I'm looking at a city. Now I can see streets, but I can't see specific houses, and I definitely can't see the specific cars. And finally, if I'm looking at a, um, a whole country, I might look at something like 1 to 6 million. So your scale number, and the theory behind it is exactly the same. As your scale gets bigger, we're looking at a bigger area, less detail. Okay? As the scale gets smaller, we're looking at a smaller area and a lot more detail. So let's go back to our question. So question one said we're going to convert that. Now, I like to write this exactly as ratios. So I say 1 to 250 is what I've been given. That is my scale number. And now I've got 3.8 centimeters is measured on a plan. So this, remember, was my plan, and this was my real life. And the question is calculate the actual length of the scale, the actual length of the wall. So I have got 3.8 centimeters here. And now I'm going to include my units. But if your units confuse you, you can leave the units out until the last step. But just remember what we're dealing in. And we're going to deal with this as a ratio. So what do I do to 1 to get to 3.8? I times by 3.8. And I do the same thing this side, times by 3.8. Now I get my calculator out. And I say 250 times 3.8. And I get an answer of 950. So that is 950 centimeters. And what's really important now is to think and it's logic. We don't speak about 950 centimeters. We would speak about that in meters. So we need to convert it to meters. And if you can remember, there are 100 centimeters in a meter. So we're going to divide by 100, and we're going to get 9,5 meters. Reread the question just to check. On the plan, the length of the wall is measured at 3.8. Calculate the actual length of the wall, and I've got that. So let's move on to the second one. What happens if my plan is 1 to 475? I'm going to do the same thing. 1 to 475. My plan was 3.8. And that was centimeters. So let me add my centimeters. And again, I need to multiply by 3.8. I'm going to multiply by 3.8. So get my calculator out. 475 times by 3.8, and I get 1805. That was 1805 centimeters. And again, divide by 100, and I get an answer of 18.05 meters. And now, be careful of your rounding. Read the question again. They didn't say anything, so what do we do? Always two decimal places. They don't give it to you unless there's a logical explanation where you need to round up or round down, and we've discussed this before, go to two decimal places. 
And finally, let's see how distance if we have 1 to 1500. Let's change our color pen. 1 to 1500. That was 3.8. And again, we're going to put that question mark there. So we're going to times by 3.8 and times by 3.8. Get my calculator out. 1500 times by 3.8 and I get 5700. So 5700 and that was centimeters. Again, divide by 100 and we get 57 meters. And again, you can see that my distances are actually bigger now because I've got a bigger scale. I've got a bigger scale and that means I'm going to have less detail but more space. So this 3.8 centimeters has changed from like 57 meters and our original was only nine and a half meters. So I hope that that helps you to understand what I said earlier about the bigger the scale number is, the bigger the distances are, but the less detail that we can get. Megan, I wonder if we should give them a little bit of a break now before we actually go on to All right, our, do you next think, yeah, our next just question. Just a little bit of a break. Great tens, you've been so, so good. Please, please keep tuned in because you know what? After the break, I can tell you about my little secrets. And I know you want to hear about it because I'm sure you've heard a little bit, you know, in the week. Someone might have said it, someone might have not. So stay right back and afterwards, you'll see exactly what I'm going to tell you. So enjoy and I'll see you afterwards. Welcome back, grade 10 to 12. Sorry, I told you, this is my first Thursday, so I'm actually a bit nowhere today. But it's fine. I know you guys will deal with me, but it's fine. So let me tell you about the competition that we are running for three weeks. It's called After Earth. So like I said in the beginning, I don't know if you've heard about it. You have to have heard about it throughout the week because this is the biggest thing happening at the moment. So let me explain to you exactly how it works. Each show, so grade 10 show, 11 show, and 12 show, we're going to be saying a keyword. So my keyword for this show is Nova Prime. Nova Prime. But I'm going to be posting it on the page so you can actually see what it is and how to spell it and all that nonsense, just in case you don't actually know what's going on. But it's all about this movie that we're going to try and incorporate in the shows, these live shows. And it's about Will and Jaden Smith, father and son, who crash land on Earth. And Earth is in... I can't say the word, habitable, is that the word? Anyway, <laughs> so you can't stay on Earth anymore, basically. And it's a movie all about how Earth has died, so Mindset and Sony have decided that they are going to incorporate this in a competition. So to register on the competition, you have to go to www.learnextra.co.za forward slash after Earth. And that's where you register. So two, you can win tickets for you and your friend to go to a movie and see it. I know I would love to do that. So before I carry on and on about the competition, let me just show you the trailer and I know I know for a fact you'll want to go watch it. So enjoy the trailer and I'll see you afterwards, okay? In the field, you are emotionally unpredictable. You confuse courage with recklessness. I'm not advancing you. You have a son that you do not know. He's reaching for you, and he does not need a commanding officer. He needs a father. Now go make some good memories together. Crash landed. Two confirmed survivors. Do you know where we are? No, sir. This is Earth. There's an emergency beacon in the tail section of our ship. Approximately 100 kilometers from here. We need to retrieve that beacon. Or we're going to die. Everything on this planet has evolved to kill humans. <laughs> Together, we will survive. I hear something. It has found you. We must abort this mission. 
You wouldn't give any other ranger that order. You are not a ranger. You are my son. Remember, danger is very real. But fear is a choice. If we are going to survive this, we fight. So I know you guys are very interested in the trailer and I'm interested in the movie because I know that you're interested in the movie, right? Say yes. Yes. Okay. So I've told you about the competition and all you need to know. If you have further questions, talk to me on Facebook. I am on the page. And don't forget the word is Nova Prime. So Haley, please carry on with our lesson today. <laughs> Thanks very good. Sounds so exciting. Guys, go register. <laughs> um, okay, let's carry on with the today's lesson and we're going to go to question two and this is again taken from that Macmillan textbook and it is grade 11 topic 7 page 178 question one so in each of these examples below we're going to calculate the size of the image of the object based on the size of the actual object and the scale factor so this is different to the one before because now they're giving you the actual size so the actual object is 58 centimeters long. So we're just going to deal with that now and 12 centimeters wide. We're going to deal with that first. And our scale is 1 to 50. And they want our answer in millimeters. Now it's really important that we deal with that first. So we're going to convert to millimeters first. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to write my scale 1 to 50. This is my, my map. And this is my real life. So now I have 58 centimeters so I'm going to take my 58 centimeters and I'm going to convert it to millimeters and there are 10 millimeters in a centimeter so that becomes 580 millimeters and this is where I'm going to put this because this is real life now 580 and now I'm looking for what it is actually on the map or on this picture so again ratio so what do we do to get that is we multiply by the second number over the first. So we do the same thing here, and we get 580 divided by 50, and get our calculator out, and our 1 really doesn't mean anything, so it's 580 divided by 50. But if you'd like to add that 1, because that's how you do ratios, and you know you need to have all three numbers, then by all means, times in by 1 is not going to make a difference. Okay, and it's 11.6. So the answer to this is 11.6, and that is millimeters. Right, and we do the same thing with a 12, but I tell you what, I'm not going to do the 12. I'm going to leave that for you guys to do on your own, because you can go download the notes, and you can do the 12. And let's try the next one. So our next one, we have the actual object is 145 meters high and 86 meters wide. And they want us, given us a scale, and they write the answer in centimeters. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. 1 to 250. My thing was 145 meters. I need to change that to centimeters. So I'm going to multiply by 100. And that's the number I put here. And then I do the, still the same thing, my ratio. What do I do? I multiply by the second number over the first and multiply by the second number over the first. So now, I hope by now you've actually realized that what I'm doing in these scales, well, let's do this calculation and then we'll see. Let's rewrite it. One, four, let's try to rewrite it again. It was one, four, Five double O divided by two fifty. Let's get our answer. One four five double O divided by two fifty, and again an answer of fifty eight. So it's fifty eight centimeters. Now I hope by now you've actually realised that when I've actually got the real life value, my real life value, what I do is I divide it by the scale number. When I have my scale, my map value, then I multiply it by the scale number. 
But basically, if you carry on using ratios, then you don't need to remember that fact. So I'm going to leave the other one for you guys to do and get the notes. And let's do the last one. The actual object is four meters wide and seven and a half meters long, and the scale is one to one fifty. And now they want to answer in centimeters again. So I've got one to one fifty. I need four meters, which are times by a hundred to get centimeters, four hundred centimeters. And again, what am I going to do? I'm going to times by the second number over the first. Or we could have just done the fact that I've just told you. Take the measurement, the real life measurement, and divide it by the scale number. I'll calculate it out. So 400 divided by 150, and we get, and check your calculations always, because I pressed the wrong button, didn't make sense. You get 2,67. So it's 2,67 centimeters. I always check your calculator. So I'm glad I made that kind of mistake because you've got to make sense of your answer. And that's just really important. I mean, I remember doing map work with a class quite a few years ago and we ended up with a calculation. We were looking at the distance from Joburg to Cape Town. And the answer that one of my children got was like 18 million kilometers. I said, to did it make sense? And she said, but no, the calculator said so. So make sense of your answers. Make sense. Does 18 million make sense that that would fit into South Africa in kilometers? It didn't. So then you can go back and check. Right. So you can go and do those ones on your own. Let's go on to the next question. So question three is also from our book. Same topic. And we're on page eight, 181 and question two. Now we've got a room that measures 4.2 by 5, 4.2 meters by 5 meters. On the plan, the image of the room measures 2.1 centimeters by 2.5 centimeters. What is the scale of the plan? And show all our calculations. So when it comes to something like this, I like to draw a picture. So I'm going to get a little bit more space, and I'm going to draw a picture. So you know, in actual fact, let's put in a shape. Let's see if we can get a shape in here, if this will work. Right, so I have a shape. That's my room, okay? And I'm going to put in another shape for the map. So those are two representing maps. Right, let's go back to my colors. So this is my room. This is my real life in real life. And this is my room on the scale. Right, and what have I got here? I've got 4.2 meters by five meters. And then on the other measurements on the, on the map, I've got 2.1 centimeters and 2.5. So it's 2.1 centimeters and 2.5 centimeters. And my question is, which goes where? So I'm going to put my 2.1 is smaller. So I'm going to put it there with my smaller value, the 4.2. And my 2.5 is going to go there. And these are centimeters. Right, and now I can delete these other numbers. Now that I've got this planned out, I can now see, well, what am I going to do? I need to get a scale from this. So what do I know? I know that my 5 meters is actually equal to 2.5 centimeters. And then I also know that my 4.2 meters is equal to my 2.1 centimeters. Now, I'm going to swap those around because I actually prefer writing it the other way, and our scale is normally, and that's not going to let me swap them around, it normally is your scale first. So let's rewrite that and put my 2.5 there. And I'm going to rewrite the other one, because we like to put our scale number first. And that was 2.1 centimeters. Now, I can work on either of these, and I'm going to work on, in fact, both. First of all, I can't work in the same unit. I need to have them in the same units. I can't work in different units. So I'm going to say 2.5 centimeters on the map is actually 500 centimeters. And once I've got them in the same unit, I can delete the units. Because now, 
2.5 millimeters would be equal to 500 millimeters. And my scale is always written as one, I need a pen again, one to something. So what do I do here from 2.5 to get to one? I divide by 2.5. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to divide by 2.5 and I'm going to get my calculator out and I'm going to see that it's 500 divided by 2.5 gives me 200. So my scale in this case was 1 to 200. And I'm going to check now if I get the same values here just to make sure that I've done this correct. So now we've got 2.1 centimeters is equal 420 centimeters. Again, I can delete those, but I need 1 to what? So I'm going to divide. So I've got my 420 divided by 2.1, and I get 200. And that's great, because now I know that my scale is 1 to 200. And it's an important fact to be able to do this. And we're going to do it later when we've got our matric question. We're going to use the scale fact. And what I want you to be aware of, and what I want you to look out for, is when they say this is a scale drawing, especially your matrix. They like to put these into the prelims and into your final exam. If it is a scale drawing, then you look at this drawing and you think, I don't have enough measurements. I don't have enough detail. But as soon as it says scale, you know you need to actually measure with a ruler. You need to physically measure it. And then from that, you'll be able to calculate your other dimensions. Okay, let's move on to the next question. The next question is... The landscaping plan is drawn to a scale of 1 to 200. Okay. And we've got, if the width of the pool is 2 centimeters and the length is 3 centimeters on the plan, calculate the actual dimensions of the pool in meters. So again, going back to what we did earlier, we've got a scale of 1 to 200. We're looking at 2 centimeters on the map. So we times bar the scale number. So it's 200 times 2, and we're going to get 400 centimeters, which we then convert. So that becomes 4 meters. And we could do the same thing with a 3. We don't have to write it out again. We've got our 200 times 3 is 600 divided by 100, because that was centimeters, and that's 6 meters. Now, they ask you for the dimensions. Whenever they ask you for the dimensions, it is, literally just, it is literally just writing out what the length and the breadth are. So your dimensions here are 4 meters by 6 meters. It's just as simple as actually just writing it out. The diameter of the actual circular flower bed is 4.2 meters. Calculate the length of the diameter on the plan. So now we have our plan, again, was 1 to 200. We know this is actually 4.2 meters. I just like to convert to centimeters. I like working in centimeters. I think that they're very easy. So we're going to change that to 420 centimeters, so we times by 100. And then, remember I said to you earlier, we can actually take our value and divide by the scale number. So it's 420 divide by 200, and we get an answer of 2.1 centimeters. So it's 2.1 centimeters on the map. Okay, let's see what the next part of the question asks. Okay, we've got our drawing again. The tree is 1.7 centimeters away from one of the corners of the pool of the plan. Calculate the tree's actual distance from the pool. Now, I don't think I need to do this again. I think that you've got the notes, if you've downloaded the notes, and if you haven't, then go download the notes. And this kind of is revision again for what I've discussed. So try that one on your own. And let's see, the next question also is five meters. The patio is five meters from the pool. Calculate the distance of the pool from the patio. So just remember, whenever you're doing these calculations, to keep your real life very, and your real life and your plan very separate. And then you won't have a problem, and you'll know whether you need to multiply or divide. So do those two on your own, and I think I'm going to move on. And if we, um, I'm going to leave the rest of this question, in fact. I want you to do one that has a bar. So 
Question five now is again from your Macmillan. Same topic, and we've just moved up a couple of pages. So the map below shows a railway link from Mitchell's Plain to Cape Town. So we've got the purple, that's the purple line that you can see very clearly. And Utterly to Cape Town is the orange one. Kay. And here is my scale. And this is what's important, is the scale number. So what length does the bar scale represent? Well, it represents the length is our maximum length. It represents 20 kilometers. Okay. What length does one of the large bars represent? So our large bars, if we've got smaller bars, it's just it's easier for you to actually measure with a ruler. Our large bars represent five kilometers. And then what length does the smallest bar on the scale represent? Well, our smallest bar was actually, it's been divided into one, two, three, four bars. So each one represents 1.25. So it was your five kilometers divided by four. So it was 1.25 kilometers. And that just gives you the opportunity to use your rulers properly. Okay, I think it's time to take a break. So I'm going to hand you over to Megan and <laughs> see you soon. So guys, I hope you guys are actually knowing and understanding and Haley's helping you through understanding exactly how the scale works because it actually is one of the most important things because if you sit in a car and you don't have a map and or you do have a map, if you sit in a car and you do have a map and you look in the scale and you don't know what's going on, then this is a very important life lesson and I'm not even joking. But Emmanuel, who saw you on the page, I'm going to say hello because he's actually with us today and focusing on the lesson. So I will see you guys after the ad break. Okay. Welcome back, grade 10 to 12's maths literacy students. I hope you guys are tuned in. And I'm so excited about this lesson because we are doing scales today with Haley and myself. So we have a few minutes to go, guys. Don't, don't, don't lose concentration because this is actually really, really important to you. I promise you. Take it from someone who's old, okay? <laughs> <laughs> don't you agree with me? Absolutely. <laughs> it's great. Okay. So can I carry on? Go for it. Okay. I'm going to get to my matric question because you know I like to leave my last little slide for the matric question, but I just want to discuss this quickly. Uh, the next part of the questions, which you can get from the notes, is we're going to use the bar scale to estimate the distance between Mitchell Plain Station and the um, Philippi Station. Right, you would measure that with your ruler, and then you would measure it against your scale. You would actually put your ruler, you can get a ruler, you would get a ruler, and you would actually measure the scale, and then you know how many centimeters represent five meters but because it's an estimate we can say well okay roughly that roughly about five kilometers so it's an estimate okay you can do that on your own and i'm going to move on to the next question which was taken from the um november 2011 paper two and it's question three so the nadu family lives in peter maritzburg a map of south africa showing the national roads marked n1 n2 etc is given below Use the, use the map to answer the following questions. The family travel from Peter Maritzburg to Johannesburg by car using the N3. So, okay, if we look at our map, they're going from Peter Maritzburg all the way along the N3. So they're carrying on. If I can actually draw on this. Um, let's see if you can see the orange. So they're going along the N3 through Harry Smith, and they're going to get to Joburg. So that's the route that they get. Right. We've been given a ruler. And you're actually given the ruler in this exam. So the ruler kind of represents this bar scale, but I'm go rather going to use my ruler, which is easier, but here is our bar scale. So it's important, we're going to have to use that scale. Right, the question then says, use the map, and if necessary, the ruler, on the map to measure the distance in centimeters on the map between these two cities. So going back to my map, I'm actually going to literally take my map. And now, when they ask us to measure the distance, we're going to go as the crow flies. So it's actually a straight line. So I'm going to take my map, and I'm going to put it onto Gauteng and to Peter Maritzburg, and I'm going to see that it is about 19.3 centimeters. So go back and write that in. 
So this is 19.3 centimeters. Okay. Hence, use the scale given on the map to calculate the actual distance in kilometers between these two cities. Now remember, this is not going to be 100% accurate because I've struggled to put this exactly onto the map, but we're going to do more or less. So we're going to use our scale now. So on my scale, I'm going to measure these 300 kilometers. So you can see we've got 0, 50, 100. I'm going to measure the maximum. So 300 kilometers is about 11.3. So I know, I'm going to put my ruler down. I now know that 3, that 11 point, was it 11.3? Is that what I said? 11.3 centimeters. Yes, 11.3. <laughs> equals to, to 300 so. <laughs> kilometers. I know that. Well, that's my scale, in fact. So maybe I shouldn't put as equal. They're not equal. Okay. Is 300 kilometers. Now I want to know what 19.3 centimeters is. Now what I can do is I can go back and do go back to a single scale, you know, one, two, whatever, or I can actually just use this as a ratio. So we want to know how many kilometers that is. So I'm going to use this as a ratio. What do I do here? I times by the second number over the third, oh, second number over the first. It's been a long day, Megan. And I'm <laughs> going to times no that here, 19.3 over 11.3. And I'm going to get my answer in kilometers. So I've got by 300 times by 19.3 and divided by 11.3. Now, we get 512, I'm going to round it off. This was an estimate. 512 kilometers. Does that sound about reasonable that we've got from Joburg to Peter Marisburg? 512? I think we're more or less correct. So that's what we've calculated, 512 kilometers. Right, then... The next question says, the car traveled at an average speed of 110 kilometers per hour. They departed at 8.15 and they plan to arrive in Joburg at 14.30. Determine whether they arrived at the destination at the predicted time. So now we need to do a few things. We need to first work out how much time that is. So we're going to take our 14.30 and we're going to minus the time they started, which was 8.15. Now, I'd like to do this on the calculator. If you've got a scientific calculator, then it's wonderful. We can use this time button. 14 hours, and I know I've done this before, minus 8 hours and 15 minutes. Something you need to practice. So it's 6 hours and 15 minutes is what their trip needs to take. 6 hours and 15 minutes. Now, they are traveling. What was their distance? Their distance that they needed to travel was 512 kilometers. So we can do two things. We can either say, well, 512 kilometers, and if I divide that by my, not 90, by my 100, they were traveling at 110, sorry. Take that off. Divide that by my 110 kilometers per hour, that will tell me how long it will take them to actually get there. So let's do that first. So 512 divided by 110, and I see that it actually takes them 4.65 hours. If I press my time button, I'll get 4 hours and 39. So let's make it 4 hours and 40 minutes. So this will take them 4 hours and 40 minutes. Is it less time? Yes. Okay. The other thing I could have done is I could have said, well, okay, I've got 615 minutes. So let's go back to our purple pen. I've got six hours and 15 minutes, and I'm going to make that 15 over 60, which I'll get is 6,25 hours, times that by 110, because they're driving at 110 kilometers per hour, and see how many kilometers they could have covered in that distance in that time, 6,25 times by 110, and I see that it was 687. So they could have covered 687 kilometers. So either one of these calculations, both show us, they both show us different things. This shows us how many kilometers they could have covered, and this shows us how long it would have actually taken them. But both of them show, 
used to determine whether they arrive at their destination at the predicting cup, they arrive before time. And what's really nice about this kind of question is that you can see that in maths lit there's always more than one way to do something, you know, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. So there's different ways and different angles to get to things. So let's read the next part of the question. It says, the family left Peter Maritzburg with a full tank of petrol. Along the way, they stopped at a petrol station to refuel at a cost of 455 Rand 40. The capacity of the tank is 60 litres and the cost of fuel is 10 Rand 12 per litre. Now, there's a lot of information that they've given us here. And when you see these kind of questions with all this information, highlight the numbers and don't panic. Now let's read the question and see what of this do we actually need. So, before refueling, the fuel gauge indicated that the tank was half full. Verify showing all calculations whether the fuel gauge was working properly. So they have a tank of petrol, they have used petrol, the car says there's half a tank left, and they stop and they fill up the tank with 455 rands worth of petrol. So what we can do is we can work out how many litres they filled into the tank. So let's divide this by the cost per litre, and that's going to tell me how many litres we have. So it was 455.40 divided by 10.12, and I see that they filled up 45 litres. So they put in 45 litres into their tank. Now the tank was a 60 litre tank. So half of that is actually 30 litres. So according to the car, they should have put in 30 litres, but they put in more. So was the tank working? It was not working properly. So that's the one thing they could have done. The other way, again, another question where there's two ways of doing something. So the other way we could have done is we could have said, well, okay, half a tank is 30 litres. If I times that by 10 rand and 12 cents, how much money would that have cost me? So if I had filled up 30 litres times 10 rand 12, I would have got an amount of 303 rand 60. Don't forget it's money, so it's two decimal places. And that is less than the amount that they put in. So was their petrol tank working? No, it wasn't. So again, something interesting, and you guys are going to do things differently, but the same kind of answer. If the car's fuel consumption was 9 litres per 100 kilometres, determine how far they were from Joburg when they refuelled. So, lovely ratio. We've got 100 kilometres, and the car goes at 9 litres per kilometre. Now, we calculated earlier that they had used 45 litres. They had used 45 litres. So how many kilometres did they travel? And again, I'm going to use it as a ratio, times by the second number over the first, and do the same thing here, times by 45 over 9. So what have I got my calculator? I have a 100 times by 45 divided by 9, and I see that they moved 500 kilometres. That's how far they were. Well, that's how far, how, how far were they from Johannesburg? Well, now you would need to take, that's how far they've traveled. They've traveled this. Now you would need to take your answer that we had calculated and now see that maybe our calculation was a little bit out and minus it from what we have got here. So they've used, traveled 500 kilometers. And I think on that note, okay, so let's see. So they've traveled 500. What was our answer? Um, we said 512. So according to our calculations, they're 12 kilometers from Joburg. But I think that they're probably a little bit further out. Okay. The next part of the question says, describe in detail the shortest possible route using the national roads to travel from Port Shepston to Uppington. And now this is really nice. We did this last week. So see how everything comes together. Shortest possible route from um, using the national roads, 
Port Shepston to Uppington. So we need to get to our map. I'm not going to write it. I'm not going to write it. But we're going from Port Shepston to Uppington. Hey, um, right, we find Port Shepston and Uppington. I'm actually going to leave this question. You guys do it. Look for the maps. Look for the national roads. Don't forget turn right, turn left. Carry on. Go through such cities. You can do it. And guys, on that note, I'm going to tell you that you need to actually practice map work. You need to practice. It comes up in most exams. I'm going to hand you over now and say goodbye. I'll see you next week. Is that it, Tony? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <down. laughs> well, grade 10 to 12 math literacy. Yeah. Thank you so much. Don't forget, if you want it, it's proudly sponsored by Macmillan, this fantastic book. I hope you guys had a fantastic show. Don't forget, keyword, Nova Prime, go and register. Thanks for the show, guys. <laughs>